Hello everyone, welcome back for another 45 Drives Tech Tip. I'm Brett. Uh, I haven't been here in a while. Well, I've been here, but I haven't been here in a while. This is the first one I've done in, second one I've done in 2022, and uh, gotta say I'm a little nervous. Don't really know what to do with my hands, um, reference aside. Uh, but no, what am I back to talk about today? We are talking about some new Houston modules that are coming out. And they're not really new. Well, there's one new one in there, but we, uh, we gave a facelift. We gave some new features. We addressed some concerns, some, some feature requests from both the community and our customer base on some of our existing core pieces of functionality within Houston. Uh, that being cockpit file sharing, cockpit hardware, and a new one that no one's seen yet that we called cockpit identities. That is essentially a user and group management for your Linux server. Um, we've got a couple other in the oven, but we're not quite ready to show them out yet. And, uh, well, I'm here to talk about them. But I did also want to say, uh, it was about a year ago that we did this. About a year ago. Oh, that's close enough for me. And uh, when we released these, it was our first kind of kick at our own modules. And um, we said when they came out that... This is by no means the end. It's an iterative process. Everyone knows in software, uh, in particular, what we believe here is the minimal viable product. That doesn't mean sh just ship it. It means make it work. Don't make it perfect. Perfection's not real. You get perfection after you use it and iterate it over time. So what we gave you last year got the job done. But we heard some, some concerns. We heard some feature requests and everything in between. In particular, one, um, well, you know, the Michael Jordan, I took that personally one, a uh, customer says, hmm, we, uh, we like it, it's really nice. Uh, it does add a couple clicks though. And well, we took that personally. So we fixed it. And that's what we've been doing over the last little bit. We've been building our team out. We've been doing some behind the scenes work of standardizing on certain frameworks. We are now building everything with Vue.js. Um, we are, uh, our, our build and deployment, our CI CD pipeline is, is developed and mature. And the whole point here is we wanted to rebirth the ones that you saw about a year ago and standardize aesthetically. Add some new features, address any concerns or bugs that came up in the past, and ultimately uh, take that next step as a company, along with everything else that we do. So without further ado, I'm not gonna go detail by detail, click every button, but we are gonna show you uh, what's new and what's fun about the um, new and updated modules. So, why don't you join me at the computer? All right, so we have, uh, I have two systems here that we're gonna go through a little demo on. We've got, I've got a, a single AV15 Storinator and it's running a ZFS array and um, we'll take you through um, uh, file sharing, identities, and uh, the new cockpit hardware here, the 45 drives hardware tab. And then on the other system, I've got a Ceph cluster and we'll take a look at file sharing again and how that streamlines the whole process to go right from deployment of your cluster to creating shares and connecting to them. So, all right, so we'll start with our AV15 Storinator here and um, I've already pre-made a ZFS pool because that's not really what we're looking at, but I do want to show you that it's built here. And uh, I've got a bunch of disks in it, and I've got a bunch of different types of disks. I've got a special VDEV log and cache. Uh, remember that, because that'll come in handy in a second. But there's a ZFS pool here already. Um, but first, we want to take a look at Cockpit 45 Drives hardware. These are the modules um, that give you an insight on the type of server you have, of the disks in it, and what's in it, and everything. Because remember, that we, we really do uh, allow customers to do a little bit of customizing, put things wherever they need to be, and sometimes you want to take a quick look at where everything is or what's installed in your system. So, this isn't a module that's existed before, but we have, well, it's prettier, to be blunt. <laughs> and so here's our first look at disks. We've kept the good old light and dark mode, because, well, everyone loves that. Um, but what you're looking at here, this AV15, this is what's installed on it. I have a bunch of hard drives and I have a couple SSDs installed in caddies and well, it picks it up and shows it. Uh, what's very cool about this page is it's dynamic. No matter what type of server you have, this image here on the left hand corner, uh, upper left hand corner, will dynamically change to whatever type of server you have. Whether it's our 60, our Stornado, um, AV15, our C8s, our MI4s. Um, the developer behind this worked very, very hard to make sure that that all worked well and aligned well because, well, 
we all know how fun CSS can be. So, what's new in the disks module? Well, we kept all the fun stuff that we've always had before, the, the, the stats, the smart scans, the model name, the serial number, things that you can quickly identify where your disk is. The hard drive slot of where it physically is in the system. The Linux name, if you need to use it that way. The by path names. We've got three different names to call this thing. Um, partition count, capacity, anything that's useful for identifying that drive. You might notice in this table down here in the way that the disks are flashing, we've also updated the way that it shows ZFS information. You can get a quick look at your status or which disk is faulted or what's going on just by taking a look at the disks. You don't necessarily have to go into ZFS status. You don't have to go to the command line. You can just look at disk. Matter of fact, if a disk is faulted out of this, so say disk 1, 2 here died and it was gone, what you would see when that's out of the system is this would be flashing green and this would be red. Because maybe you knew that your disk was faulted, but where is it? You got to go find the effect and then you just quick look. Slot one, two. So, a um, lot, a lot of great work there. And um, so it gives you info on the storage pool, where it's mounted, how much you have available, how much is used, the VDEV configurations. Um, if I click one of the SSDs here, it'll tell you, oh, this is in a, a mirrored log. Nice. So that's for our slog devices. Um, same thing with this. This is the other pair of that. This is our cache device, our L2 arc. And um, this last one is our special VDEV. So uh, full support for all the awesome ZFS features. And a quick glance that, well, you can get the status of everything, everything to do with your uh, physical storage pool just from this UI. Um, and a couple other information is it tells you which model of HBA card you're in, if, if you're ever needed, but in your total storage that you have available. That is raw, but nice to see. And then your average disk temperature. So that's the new and improved disks. And of course, like I said, there's dark mode too. Uh, for if any reason you feel like you uh, don't want to see the flashing green in your face, you just turn the animations off and everything still functions the same. So let's hop over to motherboard. This is the... Uh, same motherboard that you saw before. We, uh, it worked great the first time, so we slapped her in there again. No, um, it gave everything we needed, so uh, all that information is there. This is useful for when you want to find out where your card is in the slot. Maybe you want to add a 100 gig NIC, but you need to use a 16 times uh, slot on your motherboard. And then someone, you call us and you say, I want to buy a 100 gig NIC. And we want, oh, is, your, is the 16 slot full or what? You can just have a quick look and you can know what's available to you. That's the point of this. This thing's in a rack. This thing might be in a data center. Who knows how physically far away it is from you? And you want to look in the motherboard chamber? Here you go. And again, light and dark. <laughs> uh, 45 drive system, same idea as last time. It just gives you all the information on your system. You need to contact 45 drives and for a service ticket or you want any information on your system, you've got your serial information here, your type of uh, chassis, the model number of your storinator, your serial numbers. Quick glance at all the info that you might need. Um, also some more information about PCI slots, CPU, RAM, all that great stuff. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on to uh, identities. Now we'll look at file sharing first. So this is the new and improved file sharing. So instead of a couple blocks just kind of slapped in there, uh, we've maintained the awesome function that was there before, but we've got some uniform aesthetics across all the modules. We have our global Samba configuration settings and our shares down here. Um, look, I was already editing a share. Let me cancel that. So uh, your server description, work group, log level if you want to, I was obviously debugging some things here, and your advanced settings if you ever want to change it. Remember, with Cockpit, with Houston, we want to enable people to work whatever way they want. If they want to do it in the UI, if they want to do it in the command line, we support both of those methods. If you go change your Samba configuration in the command line, you can do that. We use the Samba net registries to do that. Um, and by doing that, it's very easy for the UI to pick up any changes. So if you change it here or you change it in the command line, it is well aware of what you're doing. Um, so. Let's, uh, let's add a new share to show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to say new share. Um, I'll give the same description because who cares. And then a path. So um, mount, let's, let's say, uh, I think it's storage. No, I've got it. Let's go storage. I can't type today. Storage, um, new path. So you notice how it says right away, your path does not exist. So typically, in the past, you'd either hop to the 
terminal or you'd go over to navigator and you'd make it you would just hit create now it'll make that path for you and then oh but what about permissions hit edit permissions decide what you need to do there say i want smb user someone i've made already and the group uh, roots fine as a group you hit apply and it changes the permissions for you the idea here is that you don't have to jump between screens to get a new share up we've got a couple other features here these are the same windows acls if you've joined a domain shadow copy if you want to do that and what it does is it just populates your shares with some pre-templated options that are common um, so i'll close that hit confirm and we've got ourselves a new share here um, for whatever reason, maybe you want to have another system and you want to copy over everything there, uh, you can actually export your configuration file. Um, that failed because I'm not on the right network right now, but uh, you can export it, download it, and import it on the other one. And the idea here is, well, if something goes horribly wrong with your server and you need to re reinstall the operating system, you can have a backup of your Sama config, or say you just want to replicate it to another one. It's a useful feature. We'll jump to NFS real quick. NFS is simple. That's the point of NFS. It can just be very simple. You jump over here, you can add a new path, and the functionality is the, uh, the, the same as it was before. Edit perms. I'm going to do the same thing here. I want to give it SMB user. Typically, it would be a different type of user. Hit apply, and there you go. Oh, I got an error because I made the same share twice. I can hear Josh going, Brad. Um, so we'll just do NFS2 this time. Path is not created. There we go. Edit permissions. Let's try this one more time. But the nice thing there is our little badges tell you it's successfully, and it tells you pretty clearly if something went wrong, too. It's not like a quiet, oh, man, did that work or not? Anyway, same idea with NFS. You can export your NFS exports and import them somewhere else or on the system again if you want. So that's new file sharing. Hop over to Identities, and this is the landing page of Identities. This is Users and Groups. We felt that the default user module, the accounts module in um, Cockpit did its job, but we needed a little couple extra features out of it, so we built Identities. Um, here you can manage users, and you can manage local groups. Um, there's a table here of the user login history that shows you where they've come from, which uh, if they're logged in or not, what's in, and everything from there. So you can, uh, yeah, you can use it for audit purposes and everything like that. So users, obviously our default, blah, 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 but let's make a new user. Click this person, let's say new user, user, <laughs> and uh, the primary group will give them its own. You hit apply, it wants a password. I'm gonna put a weak password in, apply, apply, done. There you go, you got a new user. So it helps you out a little bit. It tells you if your SS direct, your shush directory doesn't exist, it can make it for you. I don't need that right now, so I'm going to dismiss it. And it takes me back to the user creator because there's a couple other things for me to do. I can change an account password. I can lock an account out. I can expire a password if I need to. Or if this person needs to be able to log into a Sama share, I can set the Sama password from here. This functionality, the Sama password, this used to be in file sharing, but we felt that it did not belong in file sharing. File sharing should be creating shares. User authentication should be done in the user authentication module. Anyway, and then as users, this, this table here would be the same as the other table, um, but just specific to the user. It tells you about their history here. Same function for groups. It's just a list of groups, and you can add people in. But with all that said, let's hop over to the Ceph cluster and I'll show you how you can go from a fresh Ceph cluster to get a couple domain shares going like that. Okay, so the part B of this demo is a Ceph cluster. And what I want to show you here is how, um, how streamlined it is to go right from the deploy cluster to creating some Samba shares or some NFS shares. So I've already got a cluster deployed. Here's my path through uh, Ceph deploy. I uh, deployed core, CephFS, and Samba. Um, so I'll jump right into file sharing here. So as you can see, this is all pre-configured because our playbook set it up for you. And um, we are joined to our test domain 45lab.local. Um, what we want to do now is just make a new share. We don't have to change anything else. Everything else was configured for us. So let's call this CephFS1. And I'm going to describe this share CephFS1. And where it's mounted is CephFS, CephFS1. 
That's the path I'm creating. So it says path does not exist because, well, there's nothing in there. I want to create now. I'm going to hit that. And all of a sudden, you can see right away, I got a couple new things popped up. Now, it's, it, it dynamically senses if it's a, uh, a Ceph path that it's sharing out because there's some extra things we can do. So first of all, let me edit those permissions. Remember, because we're doing this all in one UI here. So I want to add a domain member to that. So I'm going to add myself, BK. So here we've got every user in the system, local and domain. If they're a domain user, they're, uh, they're, they're noted that way. And I noticed all our test user here. Um, and then group, I want to add domain admins. Because what I want to do is I want to set this up so that I can admin all the permissions over on the Windows side. So we're going to hit apply. So uh, let's put a quote on it, a Ceph quota. We can do that. Let's do 50 terabytes. I don't think I have that much space. Let's do 5 terabytes. Ceph layout pool, same as before. It's just going to use the default pool because I don't have any extra ones created. We're going to check the Windows ACL box. As you notice, the valid users and valid groups goes away because we're going to do the permissions Windows side. And we're just going to hit confirm. So successfully added the share and successfully set up Ceph remount for the share. So it mounted it where we needed it to be. Um, from here, we're going to go over to Windows. So uh, here we are in our uh, a Windows. Uh, well, actually, it is my AD itself. Um, the point is, is I'm logged in as BK, as the user that I said who could come in and admin the shares. And we jumped right from that file sharing. So let's go 152.5.167 is the share I created. So we'll go to the network path first. There's CephFS1 that we just made. Clicked in. We get in on it right away. And we have write permissions. Wonderful. Um, if I want to change the share permissions, I can hit properties. I can go to security. I can edit this. I can, oh, I didn't want to remove you. I'm going to add uh, the lab group. I'll check that name, hit OK, and I want to give them full control. Hit apply. It says, are you sure you want to do this at the root of the share? And it's like, yep, yes, I do. Hit OK, close. And now anyone who is in the domain group lab can log into this thing. All right, so that brings us to the end of the demo of our new or freshly improved modules. Um, so that's not everything. We've got a couple, other, is a couple others in the oven right now, so stay tuned. You'll see me up here again when we're ready to release those. Uh, for those who are eager, um, these modules will be released on our repository relatively soon. But in the meantime, they're out for pre-release on our testing repository. So feel free to enable that and maybe try them out if you want. So again, thank you to the community. Thank you to our customers. And we're eager to give you these new uh, tools that we've created. So, see you guys again soon. Bye.